Hey everyone, welcome to ccghouse.com. This is one of our uh, box opening videos. Today we're gonna be opening up uh, Jumpstart. If you're unfamiliar with Jumpstart, Jumpstart's the newest product from Wizards of the Coast. Um, it's something similar to uh, Keyforge and Smash Up, uh, where Magic wanted to take a different idea of how you can play sealed events with each other. So each pack is gonna have a random theme. Themes can vary between um, angels, goblins, rainbow, dragons, all these types of things. And within each theme, they have a certain set of cards. Um, you're not guaranteed a specific card um, in your theme. You'll see a variety of different things. In fact, uh, well, I'm sure we'll see some today, but an example would be you could get a vampire theme deck and someone else could get, could get a vampire theme deck and you could have completely different cards within them. Um, you're, no, you're always guaranteed one rare, but you have the possibility of seeing up to two or even three or a rare and a mythic in it. Um, so with that, let's just go ahead and get started and open some of these boxes. We can talk a little bit more about Jumpstart as we go. So Jumpstart boxes have 24 packs in them. Each pack has uh, 20 cards inside, and you're gonna get a certain amount of cards to fit the theme and some land. You're also gonna get a really fun land um, that represents the theme inside them. So it's kind of an example of it. You wanna mix and match for Maximum Mayhem. The goal of this set was for you to buy two packs, shuffle them together for a 40 card deck, and to play uh, someone else, a friend or an opponent at one of your local stores uh, who did the same thing where you just kind of have these random packs and you play together and have some fun and just see how crazy it could be. Um, here's a good example of like how you can play, what you can mix, and how you battle your opponents. So I love this, it's a great design. Um, unfortunately during COVID, we're not able to experience Jumpstart the way it was intended uh, in stores, but we have some potential here in the future um, as long as we can get our hands on some more packs. Let's go ahead and start busting. So average pack, um, display, no cardboard, anything like that. Um, it does say 20 card booster pack. It is a little bit thicker, uh, but everything's about the same. Let's get that out of here. Start busting it up. So what's nice about these Jumpstart packs is it's gonna tell you right in the front with a uh, face card like this where it's gonna tell you the theme. So the theme in this one is Chandra. We're gonna see that it's sealed, um, unlike other packs that will open here, so. We undo that, we take a look here. So automatically we know Chandra's gonna be in the deck here, or Chandra-like cards, and here we go. Our first mythic, Chandra Heart of the Fire. Um, Great Planeswalker from the M21 set. Chandra's Incinerator, another strong card. So we already have one rare and one mythic. Um, that's pretty strong. Chandra's Pyroling, Flames of the Fire brand. Um, here you're gonna actually see the jumpstart symbol. So we get a little closer there, you can see that it has these two cards in a circle. Um, that's gonna be the symbol for Jumpstart. Of course, we are gonna have some cards here from the M21 set. Um, for example, like Chandra, which is gonna have the M21 symbol. So Flames of the Fire brand, Pyro Classic Elemental, Young Pyromancer, Chandra's Magmut, another Chandra's Magmut, Thrill of Possibility. Here's a great card here. Um, uh, Fanatical Firebrand, Hungry Flames, Pillar of Flame. And uh, here's a series of cards we're gonna see in almost every deck is the Thriving Lands. The Thriving Lands enter play tapped. Uh, when they enter the battlefield, you'll choose a color other than the one it represents. So for this one, it, for example, it represents uh, red, Thriving Bluff represents mountains. So it already can tap for a mountain, but you can choose an additional color um, for it. And then you can tap it to choose to either um, create a red mana or you can create a man of a different color of what you chose. So this is great in this format, as well as uh, for people who are looking for some different lands for their uh, commander decks. So the special land in the Chandra set is actually gonna be the showcase lands from M21. So we're gonna see that in all the Planeswalker decks as far as getting that one special land. So there you go. The nice little flame border there um, for all those uh, Pyromancers. And then we're just gonna get a random set of uh, lands from M21 here. All mountains, all different pictures, uh, no real consistency. So that's our first pack there. I thought that was pretty solid. Um, if you're gonna play red, you definitely want goblins or Chandra. Um, seems pretty good. So let's take a look at the next one here. Go through the packaging, see what the theme is. Predatory, here we go. This should usually be your typical big fat green decks, uh, uh, creatures that 
come into play, usually have trample, maybe we'll see some fight cards, those types of things. Now the fun part, part about Jumpstart is a lot of the um, colors actually have some really unique cards that they're bringing back that a lot of people are in search for. For example, uh, we have a chance of seeing like Crater Hoof Behemoth um, in the predatory uh, Jumpstart theme. Um, but also we're gonna see some new cards that are, were just created for the set. Um, these are gonna be some pretty popular cards. So hopefully we see them today. So Nalith of the Dire Hunt. Um, here we go, strong little jumpstart card, two green, two colorless. Never one or more creatures you control fight or become blocked, draw a card. That's pretty great. Um, also, she has the ability at the beginning of combat. On your turn, you may pay two colorless and one red or one green uh, hybrid mana cost. And if you do, double target creature's power until the end of turn. That creature must be blocked this combat if able. So this is already a super strong card. We can see this being played in Commander uh, for those who like to play uh, Gruul. Uh, the red green colors there so pretty solid this is our rare for the set fungal rebirth uh, affectionate indrick brindle shout irresistible prey truffle snout saber tooth mauler a lot of m21 cards in this one uh crushing canopy dawn treader elf marauder's axe and here's the thriving one for the forest thriving grove um time to feed ginger brute and then here's the special little land here. So we'll notice it has the jump start symbol. Um, it's pretty cool. You got this uh, elk here and all this, uh, all these predatory plants about to take it. So I like that. It kind of gives you a different feel. You would expect to see something more like this with a large beast, but instead we see the plants. That's pretty cool. And then just a bunch of forest from M21. So pretty solid so far. That's our second set. So Chandra, predatory. Let's take a look at the third one. second Chandra set. Okay, that's pretty crazy. Well, while I have a Chandra out already, let's go ahead and open them and see how similar they are. This is a great, going to be a great example of how you can get two of the same themes, but you're going to see some different cards. So let's actually do this side by side here. So we're going to see both are going to come with a Chandra Heart of the Fire. Okay, great, strong mythic. Um, let's see, both are going to come with Chandra's Incinerator. All right, so far, so it's pretty much the same. Chandra's Pyreling, and it looks like I messed this up a little bit here. Change that. Okay. So Flames of the Firebrand again. Flames of the Firebrand. Pyro Pyroclastic Elemental, that's the same. Young Pyromancer, Young Pyromancer. Oh, I'm about to be disappointed if this is 100% identical. Chandra's Magma, Chandra's Magma, Chandra's Magma, Chandra's Magma. Thrill of Possibility, Thrill of Possibility, Fanatical Firebrand, Fanatical Firebrand, Hungry Flames, Hungry Flames, and Pillar of Flame, Dragon Bluff. This is 100% uh, identical. I, my assumption is a lot of times with the Planeswalker ones, you're not going to see a variety of cards because um, they try to keep it a little bit more on theme, but I will say I'm a little disappointed there wasn't one change in these two themes. Now, if I were to get two Chandras in a sealed format like this, I would actually be pretty ecstatic. So someone would probably tell me that maybe it's not that good, but at the same time, two Planeswalkers that can deal two damage for a plus one to a target. That seems pretty solid in a limited format like this. Um, she does cost five to get out, but that's all right. That is all right. Okay, well, if I get another predatory one, maybe we'll see some variation. All right, Feathered Friends. Feathered Friends is the mono white theme. So let's take a look here. It's a fun little one. What's great about all these face cards is this allows you to keep the themes together. So if you wanted to reseal these using team bags or you know uh, rubber bands, whatever you want to do, put them in Ultra Pro boxes, you could keep these themes together and use them for your own little cube or your own little uh, house draft Whatever, whatever's gonna work best for you and your playgroup. So let's take a look. Steel Plum Marshall is the first rare here. Uh, it's a flying, it's a bird soldier. It's two white, three colorless. And whenever it attacks, other attacking creatures you control with flying get plus two, plus two to the end of turn. And it is a three, three. So it's not super great for a five, um, but it is a flyer and in a sealed format, that's gonna do a lot of work. 
uh, is also not legendary. So a lot of times uh, you can have some fun with this and some casual play. So Angelic Ascension from M21, Avon Gaggle Master, Falcon, Falconer Adept, Sky Tether, Concordia Pegasus, Ward Battlements, Swift Response, Gale Swooper, Healer's Hawk, Tandem Tactics, and then the White Thriving Card, Thriving Heath, Celestial Enforcer, and then here's the land. So here we're going to see a couple of nests here, um, a bird with probably way too many wings flying out of it, no, not really sure where that's from. I'll just assume it's Zendikar where everything has way too many wings, um, and we'll go from there. So a bunch of them lands there. So different different kind of set um surprised that we went with a flying theme um but a lot of times in still formats flying creatures can make a huge huge difference all right so now we have above the clouds this is actually pretty funny to get a second flying theme but in a different color so above the clouds being you know things like drakes or uh maybe some sprites we'll take a look here so i really like this design artwork i would love to see these types of things um, come out more often or maybe in a larger setting. Just really has that magic feel. The black frame is really good. I think it really highlights the art. I think uh, Wizards of the Coast could do very well selling this uh, more as an art product, uh, making it a little bit larger. Um, I think it would look really well in stores and I'm sure it would look great in people's walls. So let's take a look here. Okay, here we go. Legendary Creature, uh, Ineas the Gale Force. This seems pretty good. Two blue, uh, three colorless. Uh, you know, most of the rares we're noticing have a very similar cost of five. Uh, we have a flying creature. It's a two colorless, one, uh, sorry, a white or blue hybrid. Tag creatures with flying get plus one, plus one to the end of turn. Seems pretty good. Whenever three or more creatures you control with flying attack, each player gains control of a non-land permanent of your choice, controlled by the player to the right. So here you go, some crazy shenanigans in Commander. Uh, for those people who really love the blue-white, exchanging control of stuff's pretty solid. Uh, this would actually be a great uh, combination with the Feather Friends one we already saw because um, we're going to see a lot of the bonuses from uh, playing at flying creatures and attacking with those creatures. Rain of Revelation from M21. Uh, Unsubstantiate from M21. At Tarlin's Invocation. This is a great card. Um, always fun to see this one coming back. I love getting two, two, two flyers uh, for four there. Uh, Tide Skimmer, Keen Glide Master, Capture Sphere, Roaming Ghost Light, Frost Breath, uh, Mistral Singer, Wall of Runes, Thriving Isle, Loyal, uh, Lofty Denial. And then here is the Above the Clouds land. Very nice here. Reminds me a lot about Kamigawa, um, except we never saw those islands like floating above the clouds. So it's pretty neat. I uh, really love that. And then just some more M21 art here. So this one was a little bit more M21 heavy, um, but it's actually pretty solid when you see stuff like that. The flyers, the frost breath um, could have used another counter, but you know, having one is pretty great. Um, you have the capture sphere, which has flash, which is awesome. And you have the glide master to make any creature flying just in case you don't get another flying theme. So this one wasn't bad. I really like this. I would enjoy getting that one. All right, we are now on pack number six, devilish. Really, once again, if we could uh, get this art, that'd be pretty great. This is pretty good here. Unwrap there, straight from the middle of the card. Let's take a look, Hell Rider, fun card here. Uh, hey, so whenever creature you control attacks, Hell Rider deals one damage to the player or Planeswalker, it's attacking. So finally, we're seeing some of the stronger cards that are, you know, less than five costs. There are some great ones in Jumpstart. Um, next one, we're getting Sin Prodder. This is our other rare. So already two rares in this set. It has Menace, so it needs to be blocked by at least two creatures. Uh, can't be blocked by one. And at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library. An opponent may have you put that card into your graveyard. If a player does, Sin Prodder deals damage to that player equal to the card's converted mana cost. Otherwise, put that card in your hand. Um, so fun. Uh, one thing that Devils love to do is just cause uh, chaos. And I think that's a great example of that. Uh, Traitor's Greed. Um, barrage of Expendables. So here's another Jumpstart card we're seeing come back. Uh, Chained Brute. Spiteful Prankster. Fun little devil here. 
Havoc Jester from M21, Hobble Fiend, Pitch Burn Devils, Act of Treason, a classic card. Um, I really like this art, just having the uh, the Rakdos art there um, as a mask over him. Uh, collateral Damage, Lightning Core Excavator. <laughs> And then Thriving Bluff again, and this amazing uh, Devil Mountain here. I thought that's super good. Uh, reminds me of uh, what we see in the animated Aladdin movie, um, except this is definitely more scarier, and I'm not sure we wanna see uh, what's down there, but would love this, love this mountain. Um, very disappointed that we don't get seven other copies of it, um, but that's okay. This is a great, great piece here, so. I'm not sure how well this would do. Um, it probably would need something really strong to complement it, um, but I really just kind of like the whole devil theme, and that was pretty good. All right, we're moving on to number seven here, Legion. Uh, so Legion is clearly going to be represented by white and some soldiers here. So although I'm pretty sure that's a Boros art uh, card, um, I would love to loved it if this was a two-color set. Unfortunately, it is not. It was simply white. So let's take a look at some of the soldiers we're going to see in here. All right, Glorious Anthem, an M21 reprint here. Fun little card. Um, just kind of uh, bust all your white creatures, one plus one plus one. And it doesn't look like we're getting a second rare. Just going straight into the uncommons here. Seed Striker is solid. All right, so next we have Faith's Fetters. Release the Dogs. Asari Solidarity, Valor Steed, Daybreak Charger, Makeshift Battalion, Staunch Shield Mate, Inspiring Captain, Leads in Judgment, Raise the Alarm, and Thriving Heath. Here is a great other Planes box, uh, Planes card we have here with Legion. Um, barely any Planes in this picture. Uh, it's just kind of covered with uh, Legion of Troops, which I think is really cool. Has that uh, Game of Thrones feel. Um, definitely not something we would ever see um, <laughs> with uh, Boros cards here. Um, but this is really nice. It's one of the few times I can I can think of where we see large armies like this uh, just done very well um, on a piece of magic art. So very good. Would love if this was uh, the face card. In, in fact, I think it would have been cooler if they, we did all the lands as the face cards. All right. So finish up Legion here. All right, so let's go for pack number eight. Pack eight here. Let's unwrap it and then we'll flip it over here and see the theme. All right, theme for this one is dragon. So we know it's gonna be mono red here. Really great art. I love seeing the little blue and the flame. Um, strong, strong artwork, so. With Terror of the Peaks, this guy's great. M21 Mythic, cannot complain. Um, flying spells your opponents cast the target Terrors of the Peaks cost an additional three life to cast whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control Terror of the Peak deals damage equal to that creature's uh, power to any target this is solid it is not a legendary um, so this is amazing this is going to go um, surely in a lot of standard decks a lot of commander decks and just some fun uh, fun big creature decks Hellkite Punisher from M21 uh, Dragonloft Idol here from Jumpstart Rapacious Dragon, this is a great reprint here. Enters the battlefield with two treasure tokens. Dratonic War. Uh, Dragon Speaker Shaman, perfect here. No thrill of possibility. Bathe in Dragon Fire, some great art. Dragon Fodder. Dragon Hatchling. Lightning Shrieker. Uh, the Thriving Bluff. And this fun little mountain here. I think you could have done a little bit more with the art, but I do love seeing that silhouette of the, of the uh, dragon in the mountain. So. Pretty solid, um, can't complain about a dragon themed deck. Uh, pretty well balanced, it was nice to see the Dragon Speaker Shaman. I think without that, this this one would have some trouble unless it got paired up with a, a smaller deck there like uh, the Legion one, um, or maybe something with a little bit more green for some ramp. So. Let's go pack number nine. number nine here so we've seen some variety of themes but we already have like four red themes um which seems like a lot um so four red two white one blue no black yet so i'm on us here i'm kind of hoping for more black cards i would love liliana theme i would love uh um any zombie themes anything like that so wizards 
All right, once again, fun, fun, fun little uh, design here. Magic has missed the mark by not making these posters or uh, some designs that are easy for us to download. So let's take a look. Baron Talarian Archmage, an M21 rare here. Legendary creature, when Baron Talarian Archmage enters the battlefield, return up to one target creature or planeswalker to its owner's hand. The beginning of your end step, if a permanent was put into your hand from the battlefield this turn, draw a card. Um, so pretty simple. There's going to be a lot of bounce effects. I'm really going to supposed to make him uh, a little bit better so you can get some hand advantage. Um, let's see if this uh, this one has what it takes, though, to win a match. So Shipwreck Dowser, M21 with some prowess. Okay, not bad. Tarlin's Invocation with the Drakes again. Wizard's Retort, fun little jumpstart card here. Spells cost one less to cast if you control a wizard counter target spell. Uh, not bad, not bad. Um, you know, it's too blue for an instant counter spell. It's not horrible as long as you have a wizard. Uh, Reign of Revelation, just fun little art. Uh, doesn't feel magic-y though. This feels like it's from uh, every movie I watched in 2019. I don't know. Um, Frost Breath, Valerian Arcanist, Sadro Savant. Feel from Reality, Storm Sculptor, um, and Thriving Isle. So really love this uh, uh, Thriving card. Read the Tides, and Teferi's Protege. And then here we go. So for the Island for the Wizards, we're going to see a kind of a Wizard's Keep, um, Wizard's Lighthouse. Uh, for some reason, Wizards love hanging out in the ocean. I don't know. Um, but this was just really fun. Fun little art here. And then just more M21 Islands, so... Fun little set, um, not super disappointed with it, but would be really difficult, uh, I think, to uh, win some matches with that. So. Pack number nine. Oh, predatory. So this is gonna be our second one here. So here's the first one, here's the new one. Let's take a look. Let's see what kind of similarities we may find and what we won't. So. Uh, all right, so I forgot to put this in the right order here. So, Nia of the Dire Hunt, Fungal Rebirth. So, same, same so far. Somber Ward Stag. All right, here we go. Already a difference. Brindle Shoat. Brindle Shoat. Oh, both have that. Irresistible Prey. Irresistible Prey. Truffle Snout. Truffle Snout. Okay, so far we only have one card difference here, but hey, that's important. Sabertooth Mauler, Sabertooth Mauler. Crushing Canopy. Dawn Treader Elf, Dawn Treader Elf. Marauder's Axe, Marauder's Axe. Thriving Grove, Thriving Grove. Time to Feed, Time to Feed. Time to Feed's a really fun uh, little card here if you haven't checked it out yet. Uh, choose target creature and opponent controls. Uh, when that creature dies this turn, you gain three life. Target creature, you control fights that creature, so... I think it's pretty good. Uh, here we go, another difference. So this one I'm getting Ginger Brute, and then this one, the one we just opened, we're getting Sylvish, uh, Sylvan Brush Strider. So there's your second difference there. And of course, they're both gonna have the same predatory land. So that wasn't bad, just two card difference there. Um, can't complain, a whole lot. I think I just mixed them together, so. Well, whatever, moving on. So, pack number 10. All right, vampires. So this is one a lot of people have been excited about. Uh, no one can complain if they're going to get um, some of the amazing uh, black combo cards that come with vampires. So let's take a look here. Some great art here. Looks like a vampire from the Zendikar series. Um, here we go. Very, very popular card, exquisite blood. Um, whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. Uh, it's already good. One black, four colorless, fits with anything. Sangromancer, whenever a creature and opponent control dies, you may gain three life. Whenever they discard a card, you may gain three life. All right, so two strong rares in your vampire set already. So this is this is good. I don't care what else comes out. This is going to be solid here, right? So there's more ghoul. ghoul. Uh, really weird to use a ghoul term with zombies, but or vampires. So it's a zombie vampire. Interesting. Bloodbond Vampire, whenever you gain life, put a 1-1 counter on Bloodbond Blood bond Vampire. Comes out as 3-3, three, three. it's a 4 cost. Seems really good. Gifted Aetherborn, Death Touch, Lifelink, Sanger, Sanguine Indulgence from M21, Agonizing Siphon, Last Gas, Nocturnal Feeder. I like this Jumpstart card a lot. Um, 
thriving more. So this is our first thriving swampland. Um, really good in there. You kind of see the moor where it's all the water and, and all that stuff. So very swampy with some floating uh, flowers or something there. Uh, Vampire Nanonite. Pay two, everyone loses a life, you gain one. So good. Gloom Sower from M21. And this fun little vampire castle. So uh, this is definitely familiar for all you Castlevania fans. Uh, outside of that not being on a cliff, you can't tell me that isn't uh, the main castle there. Uh, Dracula's castle from Castlevania. So pretty good. All right. So that's a solid one. Cannot complain at all about that black set. Moving on, this is gonna be pack number 11, goblins. All right, goblins is very popular. Everyone's hunting down one of the new goblins here. Uh, let's take a look, see if we're gonna get it. So there's a new strong legendary goblin. Um, this will be very exciting. All right, goblin cheated. Not the goblin lord we were hoping for, uh, but a strong one. Haste and other goblin creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and have haste. Uh, great goblin lord here. Goblin Goon. All right, jump start. Uh, can't attack unless you control more creatures than defending player. And Goblin Goon can't block unless you control more creatures than attacking player. So it's a 6-6 six, six or 4. Uh, definitely has its restrictions, but that art looks good. He looks good. Um, second rare for your pack. It's already solid. Um, yep, Beetle back. Goblin Commandos. Makeshift Munitions. Volley Veteran. Goblin Arsonist. Shock. Bogart Brute. Goblin Instigator, Goblin Shortcutter, Ornery Goblin, Diving Bluff. This is a pretty solid one for not getting the legendary goblin that um, I'm sure a lot of people were hoping for or that I was hoping for. This is a really solid 20-card uh, goblin deck. Um, pair, I think you could pair this up with anyone in, of the stuff we've seen before and do pretty well. So the special mountain for this one is pretty neat. Um, you want to take a closer look there, you're going to see some interesting stuff in this area um but it's really interesting that they went with this the the typical mountain with some with some goblins there and not and you can see this these are just hordes right you can see the shadows of other goblins running in um it's just really cool um i really like that i feel like we've been spending too much time seeing some goblins in cities or uh caves and things like that and i really like how this feels um similar to kind of like how we saw the legion planes earlier all right so that is good Moving on, moving on, right? So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. I think we're on pack 12. Pack 12, pack 12. And pack 12 is a little difficult. All right, here we go. Cats. Open this up. See what we got here. So, cats. Lurking Predators, boom, 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 boom. Who would have thought Cast was gonna have one of the strongest green enchantments? Very popular. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it into the battlefield. Otherwise, you may put that card on the bottom of your library. So, super good, right? If this was strong for those creature decks. Feline Sovereign, M21, uh, rare. Other cats you control get plus one, plus one. Have protection from dogs, super good. Whenever one or more cats you control deals combat damage to a player, destroy one artifact or enchantment. So. This is a solid card, um, great. Uh, I think we're gonna see it very popular and standard, um, and I'm sure there's gonna be enough cats in here to support this, so. Enlarge with the famous cat art there, gotta love that. Keeper of Fables, Nature's Way, Canopy Stalker, Pride Malkin, Crushing Canopy, uh, Feral Invocation, Initiate's Companion, Penumbra Bobcat, Thriving Land, Feral Prowler, and this fun, fun, fun forest here. Uh, we're gonna see the little cat there. Um, there we go. I feel like I just lost the pack from what I heard. Oh, okay. No, I'm just handed it a little more efficiently. Minions. Take a look. So minions gonna be mono black here. Uh, it, it's really interesting that we're having another mono black set. Uh, we have vampires. I know you have rogues. You have zombies, you have Rise from the Grave, you have Liliana, and you have minions. So minions, I imagine we're going to see a variety of different things here. Uh, and you have a Phyrexian one as well. And it brings me to this really cool Phyrexian Tower. Really love the art on this. Um, one of my favorite cards. I'm actually surprised that we're seeing this. 
in the minion set, um, but you can't complain, right? So sacrifice a creature, add two black mana. That's just really good. That's going to be the rare for this pack here, which is Cauldron. Venom 21, Eliminate, Gormond, Liliana's Devotee, Devotee, uh, Fetid Imp, Crypt Lurker, Drainpipe Vermin. This is a fun card to come back. Dutiful Attendant, Ghoul Caller's Accomplice, Launch Party, and Nocturnal Feeder, that popular card I showed earlier in the Vampire set, and Village Rights, which seems to be doing a lot of work right now in the standard meta. And then this Swamp here. So nothing really mini-in-me about this Swamp. Uh, some Gargoyles sitting around at a altar or a... Uh, I'm going to say it's an altar more than a grave. Um, so, you know, none of these guys... These are all just kind of low-cost guys, nothing important. And maybe that's the whole point, that it's just kind of... Uh, these are minions. Uh, there's nothing really super special about them. I didn't see a strong consistency, honestly. So this isn't something that you'd want. All right, now that my packs are being opened to me, I'm just going to flip these upside down so I don't see them. That way it's a mystery. <laughs> Wizards again. Take a look. So last time we only had one rare in the wizard set. The uh, Tolarian uh, Academy guy. Let's uh, take a look. All right, already we have a different card. This is good. If we look back at the original one here, we had Baron. This time we're getting Tarland. Tarland's strong. Um, cast answer sorcery spell, get a 2 2 blue Drake. That is super good and limited here. So, Shipwreck Dowser, Unsubstantiate, Tarland's Invocation, Wizard's Retort, Captured Sphere, Opt. All right, already I love this a lot better. Uh, Vodalian Arcanist, Sage Row, The Thriving Land. Winged Words, Read the Ties, and Fairy's Protégé. So we already see all this land. Uh, wizard uh, Tower in the Ocean for some reason. Which I don't know why we have it in the ocean and then here it's just kind of out here. I feel like it could have done one or the other. I don't know. Uh, this one's super solid. Would definitely take this Wizard's one over our last one. Just a stronger consistency. Really utilizing your spells and building up creatures. So I think this one could complement any of the other decks we've opened so far. All right, another vampire one. Let's take this here. Could it possibly beat our other one with uh, Sangermancer and Exquisite Blood? I don't know. If this has the same two cards, then this is the, probably one of the best boxes we've had. Uh, Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. So, popular M21 card. This card's showing, doing a lot of work lately. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. Creatures you control gain lifelink till the end of turn for the fun cost of five. All right, another ghoul. A Blood Artist, we didn't have that in the last one. Blood Bond Vampire we had. Sanguine Indulgence, uh, Eternal Thirst, that wasn't in the last one. Calestria, or Calestria Night Watch, we didn't have in the last one. Nocturnal Feeder, strong card again, Gloom Sower. And this fun uh, uh, Castlevania Land. That's what I'm calling it. All right, so not as good as the last one, but still good, still good. Wouldn't be disappointed. Oh my gosh, we have a third one. All right, that is three vampire cards. Three vampire decks. This may be an insane box. So, three here. Let's see what the third one is. Another Veto. Another Ghoul. A Blood Host. Blood Host wasn't in the last one. Blood Bond Vampire. Gifted. Sanguine. Agonizing. Child of Night. That's new. Uh, last Gasp. Nocturnal Feeder again. And a Gloom Sower and Castlevania Land. So, We've already seen uh, two card variations between our three vampire decks here, so that's pretty cool. Um, once again, though, only one of them had the exquisite, uh, exquisite blood. So, let's take a look. Number four, vampires? Nope, angels. All right. <laughs> uh, vampire angels are just vampires, but different. Uh, at the end of the day, that's all that is. So, mono white. Uh, let's take a look here. I'm assuming this is all going to be heavy costs. Uh, right at the gate, we're getting Baneslayer Angel. This card does work. It has always done work. Um, probably one of the best cards that came out of the M10 set. Um, definitely uh, definitely turned white around for a while. So it's always fun to see it, especially in sealed uh, limited formats like this. Uh, flying First Strike, Lifelink, Protection from Demons and Dragons. Um, this card can just do work in this format. Angelic Ascension. Men's Patient Angel, Stare Angel, Guardian Angel, Feet of Resistance, Anointed, uh, Torster, Angelic Edict, Angelic Page, Scroll of Avacyn, The White Thrive Land, Voice of Provinces, fun, fun, uh, Celestial Enforcer, and then this uh, fun little Plains Land. Once again, uh, it's a Plains that doesn't show any Plains. These are just feathers. 
everywhere. I have no idea if we're in the sky, if we're on the ground, uh, why they're falling so nicely in layers like this. I have no idea. Um, but it is what it is. It's, it's angelic, I guess. Uh, maybe. I don't know. We'll just move on. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. I think we are on pack 18 here. Another feather friends. So this is our second flying deck. Yeah. On a white. Let's take a look here. Angel of the Dire, Dire Hour. All right. That's already a different rare than what we saw earlier. Um, and it's an angel, so can't go wrong. When Angel of the Dire Hour enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, exile all attacking creatures. It is flash and flying. Fun little seven drop. Does a lot of work, um, but usually something you're trying to save for when you really need it. Avon Goggle Master, Falconer Adept. Dauntless Onslaught, that's a new card for this set. Sky Tether, or a new card for, for us. We didn't have that in the last one. Concordia Pegasus, Warded Battlements we didn't have. A Swift Response, Gale Swooper, Healer Sock, Tight Cart, and Celestial Enforcer. And uh, this fun planes with birds that have way too many wings. All right. Above the Clouds. All right, our second Above the Clouds set. I'm still disappointed. We haven't seen a lot of uh, Planeswalkers besides two Chandras. Uh, we haven't seen any of my favorites, like Zombies or Rise from the Grave. Another Ineas of the Gale Force, Unsubstantiate, Warden of Evo Sile, Reign of Revelation, Tide Skimmer, Keen uh, Glidemaster, Roaming Ghostlight, Rookie Mistake that was, was not in the last uh, one we opened, Capture Sphere, Wall of Runes, Mistral Singer, Lofty Denial. And once again, the crazy... Uh, land that floats in the air, similar to like Kamigawa. So, all right. So, not super impressed. All right, witchcraft. One thing that Black did was just keep making all these small little things. Minions, witches, zombies, rogues. Um, as much as I love Black, I'm, I'm kind of, I feel like it's a little overwhelming. Um, and disappointing. <laughs> uh, I never think of witches as a strong theme. Uh, but here we go. Bogbrew Witch. Search your library for a card named Festering Newt or Bubbling Cauldron. Put it in the battlefield, tap, and shuffle your library. So it's four cost. She's one three. If it literally doesn't have any of those cards, uh, then just throw this away. Uh, Witches of the Moor. It's a new, you're a second rare. Death Touch. At the end of your end step, if you gain life this turn, each opponent sacrifices a creature and you return up to one target creature from your uh, graveyard to your hand. Now that is solid. Uh, great art. Um, strong mana cost. You're paying five for a four four. It's not bad with the death touch, um, but you normally have some ways of gaining some life here. So, which is cauldron? Perfect. Uh, bubbling cauldron, even better. Oh, that's one of the cards. Uh, Malakir familiar, tempting witch. Bake into a pie, fun. Uh, Blood hunter back. Cauldron familiar. Um, that's you know that's banned now everywhere pretty much except this format. Here we go. Festering newts. Okay, all right. So this uh, this pack redeemed itself. I'm sure it was supposed to have Bubbling Cauldron and Festering Newt, but, you know, you never know. Finishing Blow, love this art here. Um, thriving more. And this fun little swamp uh, clearly kind of represents like a giant swamp cauldron. You got eyes, you got some hands, some newts. Um, it's gross. So, you know, witch, witch stuff. Boom. All that together here. Also, uh, if we go back to this original art, I know I've mentioned that all this stuff would look great as a poster or something in stores, but not this witch one where it has she has like all these hands coming out of her neck, and that's just creepy. Um, no, that's not something uh, that's going to be awesome. Heavily armored. Um, so let's find out why heavily armored is so different than uh, Legion here. So maybe some knights, maybe some artifacts. Here we go. Pack number twenty-two. Cathar's Crusade. All right. If you can't get Glorious Anthem, get this card. Uh, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a one counter on each creature you control. So it just gets stronger and stronger, right? That seems to be the only rare. Um, Tempered Veteran. Not bad. Patron of the Valiant. Valiant, sorry. Sage Striker. Sorry, Solidarity. This is a fun one. Exile Target. Uh, secure the Scene. Feet of Resistance. Bulwark Giant. Trusty Retriever. Fun little dog there. Light Walker. Makeshift Battalion. The Thriving White Land, Basari's Acolyte, and this fun little plane. So a lot of these things were kind of like uh, uh, cards that were going to give you plus one, plus one counters. So it's really interesting for Heavily Armored. It kind of just puts this shield out there um, sitting in a plane reflecting the ground. Um, maybe Heavily Armored wasn't the right name for this theme, but, you know, 
I get it. I mean, maybe it's better than just naming it plus one, plus one. I don't know. Smashing. Um, or, you know, if you're Nigel Thorn Thornberry, Smashing. Uh, so Smashing here is going to be mono red. I assume we're going to see maybe some uh, Barbarians, stuff like that, or some stuff that's going to take care of some artifacts. Let's take a look here. Uh, also, this is a really interesting magic card. Uh, Hamil Hamlet Bat Goliath. A uh, fun card here, coming back in Jumpstart. Whenever another creature enters Battlefield, you may put X plus one, one counters on Hamil Hamlet back, um, where X is that creature's power. So seven for a six, six, I get stronger. Seems good. Sarkin's Unsealing, your second rare. Whenever you cast a creature spell with power four, five, or six, um, the card deals four damage to any target. Whenever you cast a creature spell with seven or greater, um, you'll deal four damage to each opponent and each creature and Planeswalker they control. So not bad when you already have a seven cost card here. As your second rare. Furious Rise, Unleashed a Fury, Blood Rage Brawler, Infernal Helion, Heartfire Immolator, Anaki Ogre, uh, Turret Ogre, Borderland Marauder. Uh, there we go. There's the art. Fling, Bone Pit Brute, and this fun little mountain that is clearly uh, something smashing into it. Oh, so, can't go wrong with that. All right, that is pack number 23. Moving on to the fourth and final pack here. Um, as I shake the camera, if this isn't black, I'm just gonna be upset. Doctor, it's not a theme. I assume Doctor is gonna be all about the healers in Magic. Um, I just, you know, we don't really have a tribe called Doctors, so I think it was uh, poor to choose this here. All those cool little art here. This guy's drinking a potion. You got arrows raining in. Um, clearly, he's important, I guess. Um, Moving on, Speaker of the Heavens, M21. This is a great rare. Obviously, this is solid and limited. Uh, create a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying. Activate this ability only if you have at least 7 life more than your starting life total and only any time you could cast a sorcery. Vigilance, lifeling, 1-1 one, one for 1. So as long as we have some, uh, some ways of getting life, this card can do some work. Uh, it's the only rare in the set. Griffinari, Light of Promise, uh, Brightmare. Allows you to gain life. Faith Fetter is going to gain life. Swift Response. Revitalize. Gain some life. Draw a card. Uh, anointed. Uh, gain life. Gain life. Messy Unicorn. Take Heart. Gain life. The Thriving. Basari's Acolyte. Um, has Life Link. And this fun little planes, which once again, I don't understand because there's nothing Doctor-ish about this. This looks more like Leyline of Sanctity um, type art, but it is what it is. All right, so that is all of our themes. So this was not a bad box. Um, definitely some fun stuff, as you saw when you're getting about three uh, vampire sets. We saw the dragons. We saw two Chandras. We saw the smashing. Um, <laughs> witchcraft, angels, a couple above the clouds, a couple wizards, all those types of things. A couple predatories and a devilish and two Chandras. So not bad, not bad. I can't complain. Uh, fun stuff. All right. Thanks guys for watching this video. Um, for more information, follow us on, you know, follow us on our Facebook, follow us on YouTube, or go to our website, ccghouse.com, uh, where you can find some great deals on singles and sealed product for, throughout Magic. Thanks you so much for wa watching and for your support.